Okay, let's talk to Jackie. Jackie from Mississippi. You are live on Talk Heathen today. What's going on? Um, hey, how's it going? Um, I'm doing well. How about you? Doing well, doing well. Again, it's a fine um, Sunday evening with no immediate consequences for the future of this country coming up in the next few days whatsoever. It's, everything is great. No anxiety on my end or any <laughs> of the other hosts or anybody. So it's it's really fine. Jackie, how about you? I'm doing pretty good. I I, I right. don't um I don't trick or treat, but I did do have a little <laughs> bit of candy, um, not that much. Fantastic. I would hope you don't trick or treat. I I I think it's interesting when I had uh okay so okay sorry we're going to tangent here but you know Halloween okay. was the other day, there was a couple and I'm not judging here but there was a couple that came by with a wagon of like kids that two kids that could not have been older than like one years old. And the mom and the dad were dressed up and they came to the door. They had three bags that they wanted us to give to. One was for one kid, one was for the other kid, and one was for the adults. And I was like, I'm pretty sure those kids are too old to be even eating candy. And I think you guys are just running a scheme here. But I did go give into their ploy because it's (laughs) Halloween and we got to get rid of all this candy. But that was a very strange experience. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that. for I mean, you could have just done the, you the classic. Too young. Yeah, think, they were yeah. like, what? it's like I don't think you should be giving your one-year-old Kit Kats. Maybe that's just me, but I don't think they, that's a thing. I don't think you should do that. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, okay. so, you yeah, know anyway. you just do the play. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jackie. Um, basically, I just wanted to say so for the argument I would like to present today, I'm going to be presenting St. Thomas Aquinas's argument for the existence of God from degrees. So are either of you guys familiar with this argument or do I have to um, rehash the syllogism? It's been a minute since I've talked about Thomas Aquinas, but for the sake of the audience, it's probably great to give a summary. So basically, the uh, premise one is objects have properties to greater and lesser degrees. Would you agree with that? How about you just give it to us before I we... love Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we would I think it's better instead of asking us if we agree for each premise that you go ahead and give the full argument and maybe we can talk about it from there. Okay. So premise one, objects have properties to less than greater degrees. Pro- premise two, if there is an object with a lesser degree, there has to be an object with the greatest possible um degree. Premise three is because there has to be an object with the greatest possible degree, there has to be an object with um, all greatest possible degree of um, properties. And premise four, God must exist because of this, God being defined as something with um, the greatest possible degrees or of um, the greatest possible properties. What are the greatest possible yeah. properties? So there's things like degrees of goodness. So uh, something very bad, something medium, something really good, and then the mm. greatest possible good is God. So the God is the manifestation of the greatest possible of these properties. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't believe people were convinced by this back at Aquinas' yeah. time, and, I, and I, I'm very confused why people are so convinced by this day. It's a very subjective argument, don't you think, to talk about, like, what's the greatest degree of good and the greatest degree of all these different properties. And, like, properties can be a lot of different things. Like, it it can include, yeah, things like omnipotence, I guess, but it can also include, like, invisibility or, like, I don't know what's who's to say that non-existence is is a is a is the greatest property. What if what if God just has the greatest property being non-existence? Like I don't know. The, it's very subjective. It's very weird. I, I don't find it convincing. I don't know. What do you think, Sophia? Yeah, I think that one you run into the fact that you're attempting to define things like good outside of the realm of God. So when you say like God is good, that cannot be possible if you're still trying to say like I if you're trying to define goodness as outside of God. So we're saying we as humans can understand goodness to a degree, right? And that God, we can apply that to God, essentially, and that we can understand God as being good. But doesn't that mean it's real resting on our conception of God? So even if we were to sort of buy into that, it doesn't specify, as objectively Dan said, what these properties are. But if we were to take any particular property, then we're making up our own God by just deciding whatever it is that he would be the most of. And it sort of as I'm hearing it, feels like God equals just the most stuff, 
God is the most stuff of all the stuff. And I find that not particularly compelling. Uh, we also have an amazing comment from our backup host today, Kelly, who put in the chat that doesn't that imply also there would be greater or lesser gods? That if it's just a, a rung of beingness, that you would have things that are greater than us and lesser than us. And well, no, God, it just it feels like it stuff. opens into this bizarre and confusing realm of gods are stuff. They are more stuff or less stuff. And we get yeah. to define what that stuff is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jackie. Do you just disagree with the premise that, um, do you disagree with the premise that if there are degrees of goodness, there'd have the greatest possible goodness? I don't think we even have the ability to define goodness. So to, to put yeah. degrees into the something we don't even have the de ability to define is well, how would we even move on from there? How do we reason from that point? The only thing we can define into existence are social constructs. And unless we're arguing that God is a social construct, which I don't think is what you're arguing, and I don't think what people who follow this argument are arguing, I, it's not very convincing. I can't just say, I can't say that volcanoes exist through these games of definitions, right? Like most people would say that's pretty absurd. So why would I, why would I say it could do the same for God? Like I, it doesn't make sense to me that somehow through this sort of logical uh, you know belly button staring we can just kind of figure out that god exists just by you know saying oh well he's the greatest of all possible Damn. stuff because there has to be a greatest of all possible stuff I, I i just don't find that convincing i mean fair enough but it's just a matter of definition if god is defined as that with the most greatness making qualities then um if there's something with the most to who? properties that would have to be God by yeah. definition. And isn't this it's entire argument just an argument of definitions? So to disagree yeah. with us on the premise that our definitions are somehow worse than the definitions in the basic, like in the, I guess, syllogism of Thomas Aquinas, like, okay, I guess we just don't like the same definitions, but it's still not convincing, you know? Yeah. Well, so you would disagree that God is traditionally defined by religious people as you know, the greatest possible being or greatest um, basis for being. I would disagree with that. I think we have a lot of different, particularly religions with many different yeah. gods, <clears throat> because then they actually have wars with each other. So there isn't sort of an assured outcome. Um, I think even if you're looking at the Old Testament, God seems to rely on human instruments a whole lot. And it doesn't seem like he's capable of doing everything. So, no, I, I don't really get the impression that God is defined as the greatest of all possible beings ever. Or right. consider even Mormons, where you can become a god of your own planet. So is there a mega god of all the gods, or is it just the god of our planet that we're actually beholden to? So, yeah, yeah. I, I just don't think that that's true. This is a, this is Thomas Aquinas' understanding of God, but Thomas Aquinas is a medieval philosopher. Philosopher. They had different ideas about God before the Renaissance, right? Before we had uh, the inspirations of, of the Greek, you know, uh, ideas of, of God and putting him into these kinds of syllogisms, right? There were all kinds of ideas of God before Thomas Aquinas decided, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to make the real best argument though. So yeah, I, I don't even think most people in Christian history have followed this. And even those that do have followed, obviously Aquinas being one of the most, if not the most influential Christian theologian of all time, still you ask the average Christian, hey, what do you think about Thomas Aquinas's case for the use of God? They're going to stare at you and wonder what the, what the heck you're talking about. I just don't think most people think about God in these kinds of ways, only academics and even then a limited sort of those. I do appreciate, got to say. Okay, so um, I think what... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so it's basically what you're saying is um, even if there is the greatest possible being, you would disagree that it would have the attributes that classical theism um, puts on God? I'm saying that I can't know anything about his attributes if there is a greatest possible being just by saying – through these, through these kinds of logic games. It doesn't really tell me anything about them. These are just kind of human concepts that we're just kind of throwing around with our words. I, if In order for me to really know something about a being and its properties and its existence, I have to make observations and I have to infer through reason, but also through other people's observations, right? And their own conclusions, what kinds of properties that thing has. It, it can't come from just the mind. Right. That's not how and, I can really know things, at least things that don't exist as social constructs, as I've mentioned. Right. So, well, and, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, I mean, that's that's really all I had to say on that. 
I feel like it's kind of like saying, you know, if I can conceive of a unicorn, if I lean into the fact that unicorns exist doesn't imply there'd be the greatest possible unicorn. It would have every perfect attribute that I could ever give to unicorns. Like that's totally dependent upon my opinions. Um, If I believe in ghosts, then there's a greatest possible ghost possibly out there. Yes, exactly. But those things assume that um, ghosts or unicorns exist. But the greatest possible being, well, the thing is, we know there are degrees of greatness. So clearly, some how, how do we know? Do how do we know that a greatest so, possible being exists? Well, clearly, murder is worse than not murder, and clearly, murder is no, murder. it's murder not. Murder is not just murder. legally defined. It's just legally First of all, killing. So it's a legal yes, concept. Yes, it's, not it's even- a legal <laughs> concept. Yes, thank you for saying that. And also, God kills people all the time, right? And also violates human laws on people's deaths, right? So God has committed murder straight up, right? He has violated the 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 states at the time, right? Concepts of what it means to take someone's life away lawfully or not, right? You can say whether it's justified or not. It wasn't lawful. So there you go, right? So th- it's not clear to me which one is the other based on that. So so you just disagree that there are um, degrees of um, properties? Basically, no. unless there's some I way mean, to measure them, I guess. I mean, no, we can say something is smaller than another thing because that's something yeah. that we can measure. But I think that it's, you can't, how, do you, how does one measure greatness without getting into a definition like slap exactly. battle? You know? Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree that there are degrees of things. I do disagree on what the heck greatest means. That's that's always going to be subjective. You know how many greatest hits, how many greatest uh, 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 song charts and stuff are out there, and people are fighting about that stuff all the time? Like that, th- Nobody can agree on even that stuff, let alone what the heck a greatest being is supposed to be. That's, that's clearly a very subjective thing. Okay, I understand. Um, I'll have to consider your argument, and um, I should probably look into counter arguments about uh, two Aquinas' um, arguments and degrees. But it, you do have an interesting perspective about you kind of go circular into your definition. Yeah, yeah, I think that I appreciate the the point you make here of looking into counter arguments. That's how I always choose to understand things. If I'm learning an argument, particularly if I get excited about it, if I get really attached to an idea, it's important for me to start looking into people who critique that idea because I know that I'm getting emotionally invested in this notion and I need something to balance that out. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that call, Jackie. Anything else you want to have before we let you go? Just one final question. So on that question about looking up counter arguments, do you have any recommendations for um, philosophers, specifically continental philosophers, that you think um, it would be good for me to read up on? Uh, if we're talking about continental philosophers, I mean, there are lots of responses to Aquinas, but in particular, you're probably going to be more interested in theologians' responses rather than just general continental philosophers. I think like most of the time when we talk about continental philosophy, we're talking about philosophy that's examining other things besides like general theology. I guess um, Kierkegaard is the first thing that comes to mind. I think that directly references Aquinas. And maybe Nietzsche, but Nietzsche is more interested in Christianity as a whole and not really Aquinas' whole shtick. So, yeah, Kierkegaard. Go Kierkegaard. There you go. That's my recommendation. All right, we'll let you go now. Thanks, Jackie. Have a good one. Um, Yeah, that was a great call, actually, because short, sweet, to the point. (laughs) He had a point of view. We disagreed. He was like, all right, I'm going to look into it. That's it. That's the ideal. That is the greatest (laughs) talk heathen call, actually. (laughs) Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. as, Wait a you, minute. Know, you know, I'm not a philosopher person as much. So it is fun for me to be like, all right, give me the argument. Let's just go with what, it, what yeah. comes to mind. And so I appreciate that you do know so much and do have recommendations right off because I'm like, Duh, follow your own logic. <laughs> See what comes. But that's not really yeah. a good recommendation all the time, you know? Yeah. Well, like, like general philosophers just aren't covering theology as much because, like, if the p- other theologians are covering theology. And yeah, they, I mean, they do count as philosophers in a way, but that's a, like a very particular kind of philosopher right it's just not the same thing i guess um folks who study that kind of stuff so i don't know it's 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 interesting and there's a lot of depth to it but like aquinas is like definitely there's a lot of responses to aquinas stuff there's a lot of christians today that say yeah aquinas's arguments are like garbage which i think they're also garbage you know uh, 
to just give perspective there, but I don't count because I'm not a real theologian. So anyway, <laughs> um, no, it was a great call. Actually, the greatest of calls. I think if we were um, if we were to logic our way out of this one, Sophia, and we were to figure out what the greatest of mm. talking thing calls, I think we would point to that call with Jackie just now. 